Shooting down its own brand new drone when it got out of control over Ukraine could be one of the biggest embarrassments the Russian Air Force has ever suffered. But it could be even worse, right? journalists from the American Forbes. The S-70 Okotnik was a prototype stealth combat drone designed to operate in tandem with the new Su-57 fighter jet. After the S-70 was shot down by an escorting Su-57, the Russians fired an Iskander missile at the crash site to destroy the S-70's wreckage. But photos show that long before the missile strike, the Ukrainians had already taken key components for analysis. The analysis will likely be very inconvenient for the Russians, but perhaps not for the reasons you might expect. According to Russian officials, the S-70 drone is made using special materials and coatings that make it virtually invisible to radar. After the S-70 was shot down, the Russians struck the crash site with an Iskander ballistic missile. These missiles are scarce and expensive, and diverting one from the campaign against Ukrainian cities suggests it was a high-priority target. There are several reasons why the Russians would want to prevent the West from seeing the drone wreckage. The least likely thing is that NATO will get technology that it can recycle and use in its own aircraft. No one seriously believes that Russia is the leader in this area, and even the optimistic claims about the Su-57 indicate that it is far less stealthy than Western aircraft. More significant is the risk that Western engineers might learn what wavelengths and angles the S-70 is designed to reflect and at what wavelengths it would still be visible. This information could, to some extent, negate the S-70's stealth capabilities. Given that it is a relatively large, slow and expensive drone, if its stealth is compromised, it would become much less useful. Even more serious is the fact that the S-70 was developed at the same time as the Su-57, Russia's next-generation fighter jet, and likely uses the same materials and technologies. If the West can see how the S-70 stealth works, it might have a pretty good idea of how to defeat the Su-57. But there is a more likely explanation for what the Russians are really trying to hide, that the Emperor has no clothes and their stealth technology does not exist. We have already seen some signs that Russian stealth is not up to par. In 2023, Ukrainian engineers were able to analyze the remains of a Russian long-range cruise missile, the KH-101, which allegedly has an anti-radar coating. According to the Ukrainian website Defense Express, this is not the case. The results of the research shows that, despite Russia's claims, the KH-101 is not coated with a special paint that reduces radiation reflection. All Russian stories about the KH-101's hull being coated with a radar-absorbing coating turned out to be nothing more than propaganda. Defense News writes, Likewise, when the Russians recently released images of the new Su-57, Western analysts were horrified by its rough finish. Milton rapidly strengthened in the Gulf of Mexico on Monday, becoming a Category 5 storm on a path toward Florida. Mexican officials organized buses to evacuate people from the low-lying Gulf Coast coastal city of Progreso, on the Yucatan Peninsula, after Mexico's National Meteorological Service said Milton may hit between Celestin and Progreso late Monday or early Tuesday. Celestin, on the western corner of the peninsula, is low-lying nature reserve home to tens of thousands of flamingos. Progreso, to the east, is a shipping and cruise ship port with a population of about 40,000. Yucatan State Governor Joaquin Diaz ordered the cancellation of all non-essential activities except grocery stores, hospitals, pharmacies, and gas stations starting around midday Monday. Dozens of residents and tourists lined up with suitcases and other belongings Monday to catch an evacuation ferry off Holbox Island, on the eastern tip of the Yucatan Peninsula. Holbox, popular for its shallow seascapes, may be one of the closest points that Hurricane Milton brushes before moving toward Florida. The low-lying island tends to flood even with a light rain. Off and on resident Marilu Macias was calm and smiling, but was afraid of what Milton could do to the island. We decided it's better to go to someplace safer, Macias said of herself and her daughters. Milton looms in the Gulf less than two weeks after a catastrophic Hurricane Helene swamped the coastline and killed more than 230 people. Hurricane Milton's sustained wind speeds increased to 180 mph Monday afternoon, 
the the U.S. National Hurricane Center said. The Category 5 storm, located 80 miles off the coast of Progreso, was moving east at 10 miles per hour. According to the National Hurricane Center's Live Hurricane Tracker, Milton will make landfall on the west coast of Florida on Wednesday evening. It's expected to be a Category 3 storm when it hits the shore and will barrel across the state through major cities.